Hey there, it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy. And um, today I just have a cute little belated birthday card using this um, new bundle that's in the, the new catalog, the Turtle Bundle. And I, when I first saw it in the catalog, this was like my favorite product in the whole catalog. I love the little turtle and the saying that says, you know, sorry I was slow. I don't usually forget birthday cards, but sometimes I send them out late that because I'm slow. So let me show you how I made this cute little card using that bundle. Okay, so I am going to start here. Let me grab a piece of paper so a scratch paper we can stamp on. And I'm going to start. I have two pieces of basic white, and these are three and three fourths by five. Now, if you want the measurements, because sometimes I rattle on and I miss the measurements or blah, 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 you can go to my blog, BeCreativeWithKathy.com, and all the measurements will be on there after I post this video there. So if you're looking there. And we're going to ink up one of them. Let's start with just one of them. I'm going to um, work on the grass and the sky here. And I'm going to use my blending brushes. So I have a little bit of Granny Apple Green ink here. And I'm going to just take my blender brush. And now you can see I have a, a bunch of blender brushes. And this one's kind of stained with green. This one's kind of stained with blue. But I just take them and wash them in the sink after I use them every time. And so they're stained, but they're not really dirty. But there you go. So that's just a tip if you have the blending brushes. I've heard some people say they don't wash theirs and they just have one for every color. But I have about six of them, and then I just rotate them between colors and wash them afterward. So you'll have to let me know if you wash your blender brushes or if you've had trouble after you've washed them. I haven't had any trouble whatsoever. But anyway, I think I wanna go just a little bit higher than that, like this is my grass line. Just something simple, just some green on some paper. And then let me grab some uh, balmy blue here and a clean blending brush. And I'm gonna turn it over because I have better luck at the bottom than I do trying to blend or put ink on the paper at the top. So I'm gonna take it and I tap here just to get that first blotch of ink, I guess we'll call it, off my blending brush. So that way I get kind of a smooth color and sometimes I come in this way and then sometimes I come in this way and that way you get an even layer of color on your paper. But there we go, I just wanna blend the sky into the ground, maybe a little bit more green down here. So there, now my, my grass is kinda of just blended into my sky and how simple was that? Now I have a piece of cardstock that's two-toned rather than just one. Okay, let's bring some other and continue stamping. Bring in some other colors and some other stamps. So now this is the new Evening Evergreen. Love this dark green. And that's what I'm going to stamp my words or my sentiments on. And down here at the bottom on the grass, I just want to stamp that um, happy belated birthday. Sorry I was slow. So I'm going to try to get it straight. We'll see how I did. I'm going to let the ink sink in. And look how pretty that color is. And then on the inside here, there's another stamp here that says, you are totally loved. And now my granddaughter's birthday was yesterday and I didn't get her card mailed out. So I'm gonna send her this card today. And she is totally loved. So I'm gonna send her, like I said, a little totally loved stamp card. So I'm gonna stamp that on the inside. I think I got it pretty straight, straight enough. And then on the inside, they also have these cute little um, hearts. So I'm gonna just take some Melon Mumbo ink here or just some kind of pink. There's so many pinks we could use, but I think the Melon Mumbo is a dark color that goes good with these other colors. And I'm gonna just stamp some little hearts right there and then set that aside. Okay, bring back in that Granny Apple Green. And with this little grass patch, I guess you'll call it, I'm going to stamp that in granny apple green along, I'm gonna call it my grass line, and kind of make it so it looks like there is actually grass below the sky. And then maybe we'll throw one right here and maybe one right there, just to kind of accent my words there. So there we go, so now we have the base and the inside. Let's go ahead and put those, layer those onto a card base. So this is Granny Apple Green cardstock. 
it's just your regular layer five and a fourth by four. And you know what? I should have folded my cardstock first because then I have a piece here. This is Misty Moonlight, and this is my card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a fourth. Like I said, don't worry about the measurements, they're all on my blog. Be creative with Kathy. But I'm going to just layer this right here. And then I have the same size Granny Apple Green. I'm going to go ahead, it was kind of plain on the front, so I decided I wanted to kind of make the inside a little fancier. So I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of Granny Apple Green in here. Bring that inside here that I stamped the Turtley Loved and the Hearts on. And just set that right there for the inside of my card. How cute is that? Okay, let's go ahead and finish the front. Take that that I use the blending brushes to put the sky and the grass on, and we'll lay that right here on the front there. So that's a pretty good start right there, right? Okay, so now we need some clouds. Let's let me show you how I made the clouds. So in the annual catalog, there's a die set called the give a whirl and right now my oh here my give a whirl got way over here and this give a whirl has a bunch of dies in there it doesn't coordinate with a stamp set but let me show you all the stamp uh, die pieces that come with it they look like this and what it does it makes a view master card now back in the day <laughs> we used to make view master cards let me show you i went and found one of my view master cards and it looks like this do you remember the frog that was part of celebration? But you can spin this and then you have the Viewmaster right here that changes. So we, you know, making the Viewmaster card, cut our little circle, which you'll see here, and you cut this, and that would be these pieces. So really this new um, die set that's called Give a World really makes Viewmaster cards. So it does all the work for you, even has these little um, like punch outs, it makes a little mark in your card that shows you to spin the the Viewmaster part, or you can cut out a little arrow too. So this is a really cool die set, and I think it's hidden in the catalog because you can find it in there right here on page 163, and then it also has a picture where it's used on page 157. So let me show you what the card looks like. I thought it was really cute, and I like easy cards like that that have movement to them. So I'll be using this die set probably quite a bit. Let me, 57, come on Kathy, where's 57 at? 58, there we go. So here it's used right here, and you can see how they stamped on that circle and then used the other pieces of the die set to make a Viewmaster card. But for today, <laughs> um, I'm going to just use these three dies from there and uh, cut the clouds out. Oh, look here, I was playing with it a little bit, and this is my plan is soon to make a video using the Viewmaster. And look, you'll, you'll notice here that this stamp here, I even when I put it onto my block, it's usually straight like this, but I just curved it a little bit so it fits in the Viewmaster. Like I said, let me improve on this card. There's a bunch of stuff I don't like about this card, but I'll do a Viewmaster card here pretty soon so be sure if you're on YouTube to subscribe so you get a, a notice when I do my Viewmaster card and if you're here on YouTube please like my page and then you'll know when I have another video coming up hopefully it'll be sometime next week but here's my little mini die cut machine I have my plate number one and my plate number two a scratch piece of basic white cardstock and I'm going to just lay all three of those little cloud dies right like that. And then lay another clear cutting pad on top. Try to run that through my machine. My paper's slippery on the bottom. Okay, here we go. Put him aside. There's my, oh Lord have mercy, my cat decided to lay right, he's right there, right next to me. He loves me, but yet won't let me get my video done. Anyway, hopefully he'll keep his paws off the, out of the way while I'm making my card here. 
Okay, we'll just dump those in there real quick so I don't lose my little cloud dies. We have those. Now we need to make the turtle to go on the card. So using the turtle stamp set, the first thing I have here is I have some Just Jade, and I think that one's too small. Let's use this one. Some Just Jade cardstock. Now that's a new in color. And I'm going to take Versamark ink and that shell, the stamp right here, that's part of the shell right here. And I'm going to ink it up in Versamark and then straight into the evergreen. So I'm going to ink it up in this sticky ink here and then go ahead. And this won't hurt your ink pad. And then I'm going to stamp it down right there on my just jade ink and I hope I got it high enough we'll see if I have to do it again but there we go let me put the ink away so I don't get my hands in it real quick and then I'm gonna bring in some clear embossing powder I like to keep my embossing powder little tub I think it's just easier to to use it looks like that let's take a little bit of heat gun sorry about the noise this might get rid of the cat though that is still laying right there so close to being in the video it's not funny and I'm gonna just melt that let me get it started so my paper doesn't curl, curl or warp and melt that on there and now my turtle shell will have that kind of shine to it like a turtle shell has make sure I got all of it melted one more little spot right here okay like that then again with that evergreen ink and i think it's easier if you stamp the shell first and then the turtle's body you just seem to get placement better i should say i seem to get placement better so i'm gonna ink up my turtle here and just lay it down just like that and then i am going to take another scrap let's see if he'll fit on the little one he'll fit on the little one and then I'm gonna stamp my turtle here too, and I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, I think we're done stamping. I'm gonna put all my ink away. I'm gonna take this turtle and a pair of paper snips, and I'm gonna just cut out, fussy cut real quick, that turtle shell. Whoop. It doesn't take long and I you know me I like to fussy cut this part doesn't bother me and uh, it's a real easy shape to trim out like that so there now I have my turtle shell and then with the coordinating punch I'm gonna punch out my turtle here now I might have stamped it on too small of a piece of paper but I think I can get him in there there we go and punch out that turtle <coughs> excuse me and then for my turtles little toes here I like to color those so you could either use the Stampin' Right marker or can use the Just Jade blends now I'm going to use the Just Jade blends in the light and like I said just put a little bit of color right there on his toes and then take that shell and put a couple dimensionals on the back of that let me find some, oh, I have black ones here, those will work. Put a few dimensionals right here on my turtle shell. And then put the shell there, right there on the turtle. And look how cute he is now. Then for the last bit for my turtle, I'm gonna take a little bit of liquid glue here, right there on his eye. And then I have little tiny four millimeter eyes, those googly eyes. And I'm gonna just take and put one right there on that glob of glue. Let that just sit for a minute and dry. Let's go ahead and take our card front and put our little clouds on there. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of adhesive in the center of my clouds because I want them to have some, um, 
just some character and some movement. I don't want them glued up like if their edges are a little bit loose. Oh, and I should have should have put my clouds on before I put my I think what will look to find before I put my card front on my card, but it looked it turned out okay. And then this one I'm gonna put up in the other corner up here. Maybe about right there. I'll trim that one down too. There we go. And then this one I'm gonna just put down there in the center. Kind of about right there. Aha. Then we have the back of our turtle. I'm gonna just put some dimensionals on here. And in fact, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the edge of my dimensionals like this. And these work really well because when you put it up the turtle's feet like this, now the um, the feet will be popped up too. And then just one regular dimensional right here on his head. Okay, and then take him and just set him right here on my grass. Oh, and I moved his eye now. Yeah, I'll move it right back up there. Now, if you glue something like this down, you get a little bit of glue on the edges where you don't want them. All you have to do is take the piercing tool or the piercing point of your take a pick tool and you can wipe it right off of there. I have a little bit extra up here that I don't want to see. There we go. And now it looks like that. So there you go. So there's my little belated birthday card. Sorry, I was slow with the little turtle. Now this one, I didn't pop up the shell but on this one I did, and you have to let me know what you think. Do you like it with the shell a little popped? I don't know if you can even see or embossed, or if you just like it regular. So that's all I have for you today. You know Stampin' Up! has a few specials going on right now. If you sign up to be a demonstrator, you get an extra $30 in your starter kit, and it can totally support um, doing just one class a day, your, your paper crafting habit, that's what I'll call it, or they also have specials for orders. So if your order gets up to $250, you get an extra $25 of um, Stampin' Rewards. So if you get a couple friends together, we can get a host code started, and that's through the end of May. So we'd have to do it now, but you could get some extra benefits from hosting a party. Thanks for watching today, and have a great weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday. Bye-bye.